What's happening, class? Today, I'm going to be talking to you about the electron model of the atom. Well, actually, technically, the electron C model of the atom, or whatever. And I'm also going to be talking to you about how this model of the atom explains the different properties of metals. And all those other stuff, like Canadian Initiative, relation to the industry... Now, what is the electron C model of the atom? Well, class, what it basically is, is metal ions that have lost their outermost electrons, but the valent electrons, if you want to be precise, and are now sharing these electrons in an electron C model. So, in other words, metallic bonding is just positively charged metal ions suspended in a cloud of negative electrons, which makes them stick together like glue. All those floating electrons that are moving around the metal, they're called delocalized electrons. Now, it's important to note, in molten metal, the metallic bond is not broken, but it's only loosened. The metallic bond only breaks when the metal turns into gas or evaporates. But, be very careful, metals are not made of ions, they're still made of atoms. Even though they bond in a different way, they're still made of atoms. Don't make that mistake. For example, sodium atom releases one electron into the electron C and has eight other sodium atoms surrounding it. So, eight sodium atoms surrounding every sodium atom and they release all their electrons in a cloud around themselves, right? However, a better example would be magnesium. Magnesium atoms have a slightly smaller radius than sodium atoms. Therefore, the, ma the magnesium ion is smaller than a sodium ion because the electrons get packed a little more densely together because of more protons in the center. Therefore, the delocalized electrons are closer to the magnesium center or nucleus. Therefore, the strength of the bond is way higher than the sodium bond. Also, the magnesium atom has one more proton than the sodium atom. Therefore, there's more attraction between the delocalized electrons and the nucleus of the magnesium. Another example could be chromium. Chromium can have an ionic charge of 2 or 3 plus. This means there's more electrons in the electron cloud. Also, the atom gets smaller, so the electron cloud is closer to the positive center of the atom. These all contribute to a very strong bond. Well, class, good information regarding metallic bonding can be found on page 83 of the textbook. Now I'm going to show you guys a video, and this video does a pretty neat job of explaining what metallic bonding is. So stay tuned, class. In the periodic table of the elements, metals are all found in the same general area. And most of them have a number of similar properties that can be explained by the metallic bond that is found only between atoms of metals. This type of bond, like all bonds, is based on electronic structure. We can consider the structure of the metal, sodium, for instance, as a typical case. A sodium atom is electrically neutral. In its outermost energy level, it has one electron. This is called a valence electron. Valence electrons are involved in bonding. This single, highly energetic outer electron is so weakly held by the nucleus of its atom that, in a great aggregation of such atoms, the effect is this. There is a sea of negatively charged valence electrons flowing among regularly arranged atoms that have lost their permanent outer electrons. This gives the atoms a positive charge, so we can call them ions. It's the attraction between the positively charged ions and the negative sea of electrons flowing between them that bonds all the atoms together to form the metallic elements. Under the microscope, we can watch metallic bonds forming as atoms of the metal silver arrange themselves into the very precise structure known as a crystal. A repeating pattern called a lattice is under construction. As the atoms move into the lattice, they free their electrons and become positive ions. The metallic bond can explain the similar properties of metals. Well, how does this all account for metallic properties? Well, let's begin with the easiest one. How do metals conduct electricity based on the electron C model of the atom? The electrons are free to move around. Therefore, they can carry a charge quite easily. 
The electron C model of the atom is essentially made up of charged ions. The electrons moving around and the positively charged metal nuclei. There is no better condition for electricity to move through. Now you might ask me, what about heat? Well, the electrons are free to move around. Therefore, they can carry a lot of kinetic energy with them. And that's how heat is transferred. Heat is the kinetic energy in atomic level. The electrons are moving back and forth through the metallic bond. So it's really easy for them to carry that kinetic energy. Now we're the free ions in the electron C model of the atom are held together like glue by the electron C. But no one atom is held together specifically by electrons, any specific electron. Therefore, metallic ions in the electron C can slide past one another. And that's what makes metals ductile and malleable. Because they can be easily molded into any shape. Did you guys forget about luster? That's also one of the properties of the metal. The electrons moving around absorb all photons. And that's what light's made of. The moving photons. But that doesn't make sense because metals are very lustrous and they reflect the light pretty well, right? Well, here's why. Edge of the metal do reflect the light in the same frequency that it comes in with. Now, who discovered metallic bonding? I mean, who came up with this whole theory of electron C and all that crazy In the 1900s, a guy named Paul Drood, I'm pre I'm, I hope I'm saying his last name right. Paul Drood, whatever. He came up with this whole electron C model of the atom. He said, in metallic bonding, metal nuclei are suspended in a sea of valence electrons and that's what pra and practically was right because that's what it is now for connections to society metals have various connections to society for example we use metals in our everyday life from our cell phones to the buildings we live in for example the electron seam of the atom helps us explain and understand which alloys we need for making our towers and which ones we need for making our sewers because then we need to know what their properties are right you don't want to make a tower using sewer piping metal. These all help us use metals in a very effective way in the society. Metals are also used for medical purposes like bone implants and other medical utility. These are all benefits. <laughs> you have to try pretty hard to hurt yourself using metals. High concentration of metals can be toxic to people and the environment. Ingestion of the wrong type of metals can cause death in humans. This is called the heavy metal disease. Wait, what? Wait, what? If you listen to heavy metal music, you'll die? Heh, <laughs> not that kind of heavy metal, although that does kill my brain cells. Heavy metal disease is caused by ingesting metals that are five times denser than water. Also, metals do not decompose in the environment, so they could potentially lead to metal pollution. For example, cans and abandoned cars left in the environment can hurt animals and plant life. <laughs> Mineralogical Association of Canada is very active about promoting the knowledge and use of metals in our everyday life. Also, in terms of discoveries and contributions to science, a Canadian scientist in BC did discover the first compound containing a noble gas using a metal. All in all, Canada does use and export a lot of metals to other countries and we are a world leader in terms of metal export and mineralogical expertise. So tell me Forum, if you could be made of a metal for one day, what metal would it be? Leave your interesting and creative responses in the comment section below. Well class, thanks for watching this educative episode of Less Than Two. I'm Arrow and I approve this message. You know we straight with you and your mom. For sore in the Walmart, picking out your drawers. Big Dolly parting hair like an 80s prime queen.